Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. I always like to start that way because it's a privilege to become coming to the house of the Lord. Every day I know the weather wasn't uh, you know, 100% good, but you know we was able to get here. It wasn't too bad. could have been a lot worse. I mean, you look on the news and other states and stuff and around us, and it was a lot worse. But one thing we always have to be thankful for is that God is on our side. One of the things that gets me, I, you know, I, as I uh, prepare for these, Psalms 124, verse 1. Now, for Christians, for those believers, this is an easy answer to this question. You know, we, we know where it's at. And we think about this, this one verse. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say. Now, think about it. If it had not been the Lord, it's verse 2, who was on our side when men rose up against us. Think about that. We know if the Lord wasn't on our side, okay, to have him on your side, no matter what the circumstance is, you got it all right there. And, and that's really what God wants us to do is realize that he is for us. You know, and that sometimes we get away from that. When David went up against, against Goliath, you know, and, and, and what always, you know, when you look at that whole scenario, one thing about it, I mean, Saul says, you know, hey, you know, David was willing to go. I'll serve, I'll go fight him. David, and they said, wait, wait, wait a minute, Saul. And Saul was head and shoulders above everybody else. So if anybody else should have been fighting him, it was him. You know, if you just look for size and size, all right? But you don't understand, David. You don't understand something. He's been a warrior since his youth. He's used to war. He's used to getting out in front. He's used to fighting, but not you. But they say, wait, wait, wait. David says this. Don't you realize something? See, he, he's coming in his own power. But see, I'm coming in the name of the Lord. That's the big difference. And I want to I wanna reference that. And it's going to be in uh, uh, 1 Samuel 17. Because I just think this is just a... It, you know, I love the stories in the Old Testament. I just, I just love it because there's so, many, there's, there's so many things in here that are lessons for us today to learn. And in, in, in uh, 1 Samuel 17... And when Saul, Saul was talking to him in uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, and he goes to, uh, let's start in verse 32. Just want to go over a couple. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of Philistine. Your servant will go out and fight with him. I like that. He said, hey, you know, and it was 40 days. Goliath kept coming out and Tim for 40 days, and they couldn't find one to go against him. I mean, are we a soldier or we're not a soldier? You know, and I'm just thinking, one guy's coming out and threatening him over oh, for 40 days, and you're putting up with that for 40 days? We're going to fight. And David came, and David said, I'll go, I'll go. You know? and, 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 and Saul said, you're not able to go fight against this Philistine. What makes you able to go fight? You are only an adolescent, and he has been awarded from his youth. But see, what, David, what Saul did not know is this next part. And, and David said to Saul, listen, listen, I want you to understand. Your servant kept his father's sheep, and when there came a lion, or again a bear, and took a lamb on the flock, I went after it and smote it and delivered the lamb out of its mouth. And when it rose against me, I caught it by its beard, smote it, and killed it. Now that's a pretty close fight when you grab it by the beard. I mean, he's right there, right? I mean, we're not we're not shooting it. We're not using a bow and arrow. We're not. I mean, we're wrestling with it right there. See, David's looking at his past victories because he wants another victory coming up. Because he realized it wasn't his own power, but he went after it because he attacked his sheep. No, his job was to take care of the sheep, and he knows nobody's going to attack him. Now, think about the good shepherd. Think about the good shepherd. Jesus described himself as a good shepherd. I tell you what, when you start attacking God's kids, you're going to have to deal with him. Okay? And he's going to grab. And think about the, the, the bear and lion said, I caught by its beard and smote it and killed it. Your servant killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them. And for he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. Wow. And I mean, that is so powerful. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. 
That's where it's at. David, understand, you don't want to forget those past victories. That I see people do it all the time. Oh, I don't know. And I know I say several things a, a lot, but it's still true every time. Is that that's where we get off. We get, you know, oh, I don't know. God, I don't know. Can you deliver me in this situation? I don't know. And he says, wait, wait a minute. Hey, don't you remember when I fought off the bear and I fought off the lion for you? What makes you think I can't take care of this situation right here? And, and it goes on in the verses when, they, when they're getting ready to fight. And, and we understand over in verse 45 of the same, of the same that David said, did, said David to the Philistine. He's talking to Goliath. You come to me with the sword and the spear and the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of ranks, whom you have defied. And he says, verse 46, This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will smite you and cut off your head, and will give the course of the army of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And I love this. And all this assembly should know that the Lord saves not with the sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's, or he will give you into our hand. That's what we got to realize. The battle is the Lord's. We need to trust Him. We need to trust Him every single day for every single situation. You know, I was asked the, the other day, I was out in the truck, and, and it never fails. I always get asked. It's, you know, and I, I know I shared this before. They asked me, do you ever get scared out here in the truck? They, I, I get asked at every new class, and somebody always, are you ever scared? I said, why should I be scared? I know how to drive the truck, so I know how to get back home. We can always get the truck back home. But I'm not scared. I've been doing this for years and years and years. And I understand how it works, okay? It doesn't make me an expert, but I understand I had the experience. And that's what we always want to realize. I know what happens here and here and here. Every situation is a little different. But I don't need to be fearful because I have a God who has this. I have a God that can keep me calm in the situation. I have a God that is for me. I can always look at that. Because the calmer I am, it just never fails. The calmer I am, the calmer the student is. That is absolutely. And I know I shared this before. When I get a vision of God like Isaiah did, high and lifted up, I never ever have a vision that they're running around in heaven wondering what to do. Have a crisis meeting. I never get that picture. I get it like Isaiah, high and lifted up. And I mean, you get this, this holiness, a train filled the temple. And God's just saying, I think he's just saying to us, you know, I've got this. The only thing I want you down there is to trust me. Look, I created this whole thing. I can take care of it. Actually, in, the, in, in Jeremiah 32, 27, this is contemporary English version. And I was looking up, but I just love, I love the way they put the different verse in different translations. In Jeremiah 32, 27, this is contemporary English version. Talk to Jeremiah, I am the Lord God. I rule the world and I can do anything. That's where we, where we got to really come to. You know, when we sing that song, and I have the lyrics, I like to do that at church. When we sing that song, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, I love that song. We used to sing that when we sing the great school uh, church, and, and as we grew up, we sang that song, Have Thine Own Way, Lord, Have Thine Own Way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield and still. Hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master Day. Whiter than snow, Lord. Wash me just now. As in thy presence I humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hold over my being absolute sway. Filled with thy spirit to all I can see. Christ only always living in me. That's what we got to be. When we was out in Hawaii, there's one thing I love. We, they, when they upgraded us, we got to look toward the ocean. And they had the palm trees right outside our deck. And the wind would come up and those palm trees would just sway. They, I just, the way they were designed, it, all the leaves and everything's up top. And, and no matter how that wind blew, them old palm trees would just go... Like this. They're not going to break. They just went and that went and I said, wow, didn't, didn't God wonderful? He, he designed that tree for that part of the world because he knew the wind would come up and, and it just swayed with it. You know, and that's really what we got to realize that the Lord, we need to give him our life every day. 
and be dedicated to him every day. And Lord, what do you want me to do today? How do you want me to glorify your life today? Who do you want me to pray for today? You know, I used to run the road for years in a truck, and I would ask that, Lord, who would you have me talk to today? And I'm telling you what, he would bring somebody along. When you start praying that prayer, use me today, use me today. Because you know what? Hey, you're the potter, I'm the clay. Mold me and make me. Whatever you want me to be, Lord. See, I, Isaiah understood that. You know, who will go for me? Who will go for me? Here am I. Send me. I'm willing. Just like David. Hey, I'll go fight for life. None of these soldiers, these seasoned soldiers have been fighting. None of them want to go. I'll go for him. I will fight. And that's what God, it's that willing and obedient heart that says, I will. I surrender all. I give you all. Whatever you want to do with my life, Lord. Because my life is yours. And I say this often, you know, if he died for us, and we know he died for us on the cross, surely we should live for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Never forget that. He loves you with an everlasting love. It says in Psalm 56, the end of verse 9, For God is for me. Never forget that. God is for you. Never forget that. When He's on your side, you can't lose. I'm you, you can't lose when the Creator's on your side. He knows your name. I love it when He called Moses. You remember the burning bush when Moses turned aside? He called His name twice. You ever notice that? A lot of times in the Bible, He'll call people's name twice. Then there probably wasn't anybody else out there named Moses running at the back side of the desert. But I'm telling you, it was to make sure. Moses, Moses. It's like when your mom called you. Boy, when she used your formal name, you better get in there. You better get in there. Because she, mom was, I love mom, but she had so many kids. You know, she'd go through a different name since so she hit yours. But buddy, when she used the whole name, let me tell you, boy, we had to, we had to answer to some situations. You know? But I tell you what, God's just saying, Moses, Moses. You understand? Right here is holy ground. Why is it holy ground? Because I am here. Who should I send? You know, when you can send him back, who should I say? I love that. I am. I am. Not that I used to be. Not that I was. I am. I'm a present God right now to help you. I am. And I love that. And God is with you. And he's a I am God, a right now God, a God for you. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're going to go, we're going to open this up right now. God is on your side. Never forget that today. Never forget that. All right. We get fired up here. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Okay. All right, we're going to go ahead and start a prayer request. Prayer request of praise. Yes, Roberto.
Greater with Pesco. Um, my coworker Adam, his dad was diagnosed with this, uh, leukemia a few months back, and he recently ordered a lens and bone marrow transplant. So we have left him up that his body does not reject that, that he goes through the whole treatment with no complications. Uh, he is in home.
and there's no reason for us not to as long as we're, you know, right. taking care of ourselves the way God intended us to take care of ourselves. So I'm hoping that this um, affords me an opportunity to come in and, and really speak the truth and uh, be love to them and uh, be able to speak the truth in a kind and loving way because I have problems with that sometimes. But um, so there's that. And um, another thing that happened to me was um, I was voted into the board of directors for the Freight House Farmers Market in Davenport. And so I'm really praying for peace with all of this and that I am able to hear all of the needs of all of the other vendors because I will be representing all of them. Mm -hmm. And there's like 300 of them. So I'm really, I'm just praying that God, that God will just really open my ears and open up my heart and allow me to take everybody into consideration and be able to, um, you know, be the right person to come forth and really stand up for them um, and be someone who, who will stand up for them and have the courage to stand up to whoever needs to be stood up to in a kind and loving way. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then um, one other thing is God told me a couple of years ago that he was um, going to give us a, um, a large enough facility for us to do what we need to do in order to help people. And um, our vision is to um, educate people and plant seeds and um, just open our arms to anyone. My, my actual home is, I have an open door policy in my home, so if anyone ever needed a place to stay, my door is open and anybody can just show up and you know, live there if they need a safe place to go. And um, my, my vision and Eric's vision is to be able to do that, but on a much larger scale. And um, I know that this is, um, this is my year of suddenlies because it's been happening a lot <laughs> this year. And I had a lot of revelations, so I'm extremely, extremely thankful for that. Um, and I, I'm just, um, I'm anticipating what God's going to give us for um, this large facility, and whether it be a piece of land where we can build tiny houses on for homeless people, or you know, people in need, or whether it's we have a very, very large facility where we can help educate people and teach them how to, uh, you know, make food that is, you know, honoring to their bodies and to God, or um, whether it's just um, having a large place where anybody can come and, you know, sleep and, 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 and have a meal or, you know, get away from an abusive relationship or wh whatever it is, um, I'm, I'm really thinking that this is probably going to be the year for it. So, um, when it does happen, because I'm just going to believe for it, when it does happen, um, I want to be able to be ready and, um, like, my heart ready, not, like, all the other stuff ready, like, heart ready in order to, to um, help, you know, all of the wounded people that are out there. So. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, Evelyn, her foot continues to... Uh, not manifest the healing that needs to and the infection in this toe causing her a lot of pain. I know Myron's having the same now both of his veins. Ulcerations are both open again on both of his legs. I picked him up and ran some errands and had a chance to spend a couple of hours with him. Um, but he's in a lot of pain. So um, let's continue to remember Myron. Um, my friend Margaret down in Missouri that came to visit us is having a lot of issues with her health and is in the hospital at this moment with bowel obstruction, chest pain, different things going on. Margie's just very weary <laughs> and tired trying to maintain her business, her mom and everything else as many care providers often get down. Uh, Paul Sug went to Metro with us and I got a text yesterday his blood pressure has been exceedingly high remember him in prayer, my blood pressure too has been a little 
lot of control and, and uh, we need it to come down as well. Okay. We definitely, right, yes. Uh, just remember, Myron, he's having issues with both his legs right now. Um, when he was last year, it was just one of his legs, but it sounds like both of his legs are now having issues, so he's going to go see a vascular surgeon. It sounds like this week. All right, we'll definitely keep Myron in prayer. You know, that's what the that's what the church is for, to pray one for another. And I appreciate Suzanne. Uh, on Wednesday, we had to pray for a friend, Stephanie. Well, we contacted her, and she did not have cancer. And that, that is just a, a, a big answer to prayer right there. So, they didn't, they didn't find any cancer. She was really worried about that. And I said, we will lift you up in prayer. That's how God works. That's exactly how God works. And he wants us to pray one for another, you know, that we can lift each other up. Because, I mean, I always think it's a privilege to be able to pray for somebody. And, and, and know that it goes straight to the throne room of God, you know, and he's going to deal with it. And I just I just love that, that I don't have to have an appointment, you know. you got to have an appointment almost anything, you know, to, to, to get anything done almost any, anywhere. But to go into the creator office, you know, go into his throne room and say, God, I need you. And sometimes, you know, we hurt so much in the situation, you know, all, you, you can't even get the words out. But God understands the groanings of your heart. He understands them. And, and when he deals with them, he says, I got it, my child. I got it, and I love you. I love you with an everlasting love. I'm going to rejoice over you with singing. And, you know, and I, and I always got, I just, I, I know I mentioned this before, but I always like the, the, those quiet prayer times with your kids. You know, especially at night when they're getting ready to go to sleep. I mean, some of those little rhymes we sing to them are probably are not the best, you know. Oh, of some of those things we say to them. But if you can pray with them and let them know, you know what, God loves you. God loves you so much, you know. And you ask them, do you have a prayer request? And then a little voice come out, yes, I do have a prayer request. And, you know, they get in that habit of bringing those prayer requests. Well, we're going to pray. We're going to join together. I'm telling you what, that will stick in their hearts until they, till they get older. And they'll remember those times. I asked my daughter once what she remembered the most. I used to come up here and visit him. We, Mom and I wasn't together, but I, I'd come up. <clears throat> and sometimes we would just go down by the river, Des Moines River, and we'd have a Bible study right there along the river. And it's funny. I asked, I asked my daughter, what do you remember most? It's funny. They didn't say, the, you know, cars and clothes and, you know, getting their nails done and all that other stuff. They, that's not what was important. What was important was that they got taught about God. That was important. That we shared the word of God there and we prayed. That's what will keep them through there. They'll forget about the other stuff, but they won't forget that you taught them about God, that you drove them in the right direction. And that's what God wants, you know, for them to realize one day they can call upon the Lord and say, you know what, Daddy, Jesus is my Savior too. I mean, how powerful is that? That's a life-changing right event right there. That will keep them. You know, because you can have money, you can have all this stuff, but when you got Jesus, you can have peace. You know, you, and I tell you what, that's worth a whole lot. A lot of people give a lot of money if they can just have a peaceful, a restful night's sleep. But Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and that's what they need in their heart, is Jesus in there. All right, anyone else? Yes, John. Yeah, I appreciate uh, the words of life that are coming forth from you. Uh, the power of prayer. God can use us. Amen. Some people say, little old me, God can use little old me. He can use anybody. Anybody is just as eligible to be used as anybody else. And I just thank God that He drops into us uh, the seeds of faith. And, you know, that's enough. You know, He uh, is everything that we need. And He says that our fervent prayers avail much, you know, of course it's his righteousness, he makes his righteous <clears throat> by his righteousness and uh, tells us that our fervent <clears throat> prayers are going to avail much. And I just thank God that uh, he not only makes the way but he encourages us to go for it, you know, to be his uh, voice and his children. I was going to do a request prayer for my leg because it was really giving me problems in uh, the middle of the week, and early in the week, and I thought um, this was getting to be very uh, not good, you know. Mm -hmm. I just kept, uh, before the throne, I just kept, you know, my uh, 
yearned before God. I knew that He would uh, come forth. It was not just a matter of begging Him to do what He's already done. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I just thank God that uh, it's okay now. And Hallelujah. Praise God. He's, uh, he's there all the time. There's never a moment that's bigger or higher than any other moment. Just any time we want to, we can pray for others. Do this all the time. We should uh, be lifting up one another because we don't know what the future holds, but we know the whole the future. I just thank Amen. God that uh, we're here. You know, there's quite a few that aren't, but so thank God that I'm sure they're here in spirit. And uh, just like some of us who can't make it, uh, <clears throat> some nights we still are here with you. And thank God that you. Got a uh, hand over everything that he's a great director and he uh, never fails. He's, he's never lost his home or away. I just praise God. He's undefeated and always will be and we're complete in him. Praise God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, I love that. Undefeated. God got a perfect record. You know, and that's what it's about. Uh, anyone else? Would you stand uh, for prayer, please? Father God, we thank you today. <clears throat> we thank you that we can come and praise you. We thank you that we can come and lift up these prayer requests to you. Lord, we thank you that we can come boldly to the throne of God. Hallelujah. That, Lord, you hear our concerns. Lord, as we lift them up to you, we're going to believe already that they are taken care of. Father God, <clears throat> that you can be with Myron, Lord, and touch him. Touch him right now. We know he's, he's struggled with that leg situation, but you are more than able. You are the God that healeth. Hallelujah. Think by your stripes we are healed. It's already done, and we're going to claim that today. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for, for Stephanie not having cancer, Lord. Hallelujah. Because your name is above every name. It's above cancer. It's above backaches. It's above heartaches. It's above those things. Father God, we want to thank you, Lord, for the Roberto and his house and the house of prayer. How you dealing with him and dealing with them. Lord, just God, just, just allow your word just soak in them. Lord, just allow your word just to come from the top of the head to sole his feet. And Lord, just continue to bless him and, and his wife and, and the house and all those things. Because all those things matter to you. Lord, that we want to thank you and praise you already. Lord, how are you going to deal with, uh, up there with the uh, board of directors? Lord, that you open up that space for her. Lord, and, and, and dealing with the homeless and all those situations. Lord, that you're more than able. That, Lord, you did call us to, to live a healthy life, Lord. You did call us, Lord, that every part of our life should glorify you. The physical, the spiritual, emotion, all of it needs to glorify you. Because we're supposed to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, with all of our being. Oh, Father God, we want to thank you so much, Lord, that, that you work in our lives so much, Lord. We ask you to... To, to be with Evelyn's foot, Lord, and 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 continue heal and 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 Margie and and Paul Sugg and the blood pressure issue and all the blood pressure issues that we have, but Lord, that Lord, you can lower it to the right range. Lord, we know there's not anything too hard for you. The Bible says, "For with God, for with God, all things are possible," and healing is one of them, Lord. Lord, we thank you so much, Lord, that you will be with everybody in this church. Be with every quest that was lifted up today. That, Father God, be with those that they are not able to be here today, Lord, that you would be with them. That you would meet all their needs. Be with the pastor and, and, and Sally and Apps. Just continue to be with our church family and be with our families, Lord. Those that need a fresh touch from God, let this be the day. Let this be the day. That you touch her from the top of her head to the sole of her feet. That, Lord, they realize this one thing, that you love them with an everlasting love. And that you are for them. So many people think, well, what happened to God? Is he for me or not? 
He is for you. He's not against you. He wants the best for your life. It's always about the I am. It's always about the wonderful and mighty God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that can change a life in an instant, the one that always worked from the inside out, the one that always rejoices over you with singing, the one that takes your sins and casts them in the sea of forgiveness, that hurls them there and said, that, that's it, that's it, I've, I've done away with, I went on the cross. I took all your sins on the cross. Receive me. Receive me. Accept that. Accept that deliverance right today. Whatever needs you have, God is more than able to meet those needs. And Father God, we ask you to, as we go into this service today, Lord, that it's all about you. It's always holiness where you are. And Lord, you are with us today. You said whether it's two or three touched their Greek, that you would be in the midst. And you are in the midst of this service because it's all about you, God. It's all about you. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, that you are. Hallelujah. You are the potter. We are the clay. Mold us and make us, Lord, after thy will. Father God, we ask you to be with this service. Lord, we ask you to be with your words as they flow. <clears throat> that, Lord, you're always about changing us from the inside out. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, today that we can praise you. We thank you that we can lift up your holy name. Yeah. The Bible said if you be lifted up, you draw all men unto you. Yeah. And we're going to lift you up today. Lord, we're going to bring our prayers and our praises up to the throne room. Yeah. The Bible says I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. No matter what's going on in my life, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise, not my complaints, not my troubles, not my trials, but His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And that's what it's about. It's all about in the beginning God. Hallelujah. That you were there in the beginning. you got to be in there in the end. Because you said in Revelation, I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And let us realize that you are there to give us a future and a hope. And that's what it's about. There's always a way. You said in your word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that's the way we should go. Which way? There's always hope in you. There's always belief in you. Hallelujah. Lord, just increase our faith. Hallelujah. Paul said that I may know him. That I may know him. And that's what it's about. Lord, that we may know you. We walk a little deeper. Hallelujah. That we can go from peak to peak. Hallelujah. That, Lord, we can look toward the hills. Hallelujah. That whence cometh our help. They don't come from the hills. They come from the one who created the hills. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, it's all about you, and we thank you today that we can come and praise you. We thank you today that, that we can be in your presence, Lord. We thank you today, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. That's what it's all about. And we know it can't get any closer when God is in us. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to praise you. And we want to lift you up in a mighty way today. That we lift you up. Hallelujah. That we know whom we have believed. And that's in the Lord Jesus Christ. Where are we supposed to go? Because you are the Lord. You are the Savior. You are the Messiah. You are the Chosen One. Let us never ever forget that. In your wonderful holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. Okay. We'll go over our announcements. Please silence your cell phones. Appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, still seeking media assistance, soundboard, and we're still seeking Sunday school and youth group teachers. So if you are uh, interested in doing that and feel God leading you to that, uh, just contact us here. And uh, the next Eastern Gate House of Prayer uh, will be Friday, May 11th, 2018. So if you can put that on your calendar. Okay, uh, Brother John, would you come take the offering? We would. The rest can be seated. Okay. okay. Lord, we just praise you today, God, for so much that you do for us, making the way and being the way. We just pray for this offering, God, today, that those along the way, Lord, 
God in your kingdom's purposes. Bless the man of God and things that the church needs. And God, we just lean on you and thank you, Lord, that you're always there and that you're for us. That you make the way for us, Lord God, to draw nigh and lift up one another. We pray for this meeting this morning. The words of life, God, that will come to us, help them come into our hearts, Lord God. And just help us to draw nigh to you. Just give you the glory and the praise in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. John, thank you. Bless you. Your friend, I was saying about the wind, and there was a lot of wind. I was saying about the rain, and there was a rain. We were saying about the fire, but we got snow, so maybe today when we sing about the fire, <laughs> the snow will melt. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> this is like gotcha weather. Um, I don't know if you noticed, though, but did you know what direction the wind was blowing out? The east. It was blowing over me. <laughs>
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I will rejoice and be glad. No matter what happens, no matter what we're going through, no matter where we find ourselves, there is always something to rejoice and be glad about. There's always a victory. There's always a praise. God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, I don't know how many times we sang that last song, and it took a Bible study at a craft class in Grimes for me to see something about that song that I'd never seen before. And that's actually what I, a little bit about what I want to talk to you about today. That song and the streams from that river make the city glad the streams that make the city glad. I always thought it was the river that made the city glad. It's the streams. Guess what we are? We are the streams that flow to and from that river. We make the city of God glad. And that is just how good God is. So today I want to start um, the very familiar scripture. I want to start in Ezekiel chapter 47 verses 1 through 12. And this is the story of the river flowing from the temple. And, uh, uh, chapter 47, verse 1 through 12. Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12. And Nathan stood up here on a Sunday, I don't know how many years ago now, and he scrapped his message, and he believed the Lord wanted him to proclaim Ezekiel 47 over this church, over this body. And this morning... I want to go back and reread Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12. Afterward, he brought me again into the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. For the forefront of the house stood toward the east, and the waters came down from under, from the right side of the house, at the south side of the altar. Then brought he me out of the way of the gate northward, and led me about the way without unto the utter gate by the way that looketh eastward. And behold, there ran out. That's okay. That's okay. There ran out waters on the right side. And when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the ankles. And again he measured a thousand cubits and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. And again he measured, oh, let's go back. That's okay. And again he measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, were to the loins. Afterward he measured a thousand, and it was a river that could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in, a river that could not be passed over. And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to turn to the brink of the river. Now when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river there were very many trees on the one side and on the other. Then said he unto me, These waters issue out toward the east country, and go down into the desert, and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, Whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither. For they shall be healed, and everything shall live, whether the river cometh. Everywhere this river goes, it brings life. And it shall come to pass that the fishers shall stand upon it from Engedi, uh, even unto Enaglaim, They shall be a place to spread forth nets. Their fish shall be according to their kinds, as the fish of the great sea, exceeding many. But the miry places thereof, and the marshes thereof, shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on this side, 
shall grow all trees for meat. Those leaves shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to his months, months because, their wa- because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary. And the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. So food and healing comes from those trees. Mm-hmm. So first thing, um, uh, right away in verse 1, is the door, right? The door of the house. Took him to the door. Um, there's a lot of different doors in our life, right? And, there's a lot of, and this, this word, the Hebrew word door, translates into the door of the city, which um, you want to go to Isaiah 3.26. So there's an actual door to a city, right? Isaiah 3, 26. And her gates shall be lament and mourn, and she shall be desolate, shall sit upon the ground. It's a gate to a city here. Proverbs 8, 34. A door to our mouth. Our mouth is a door, right? What we speak is a door. It's a gate and a door that is. Blessed is a man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the posts of my doors. That's referring to our mouth. And Hosea 2, um, uh, let's see. I want to read the whole thing. Let's see. Hosea 2, um, let me find the right verse. Uh, 14 through 23 is what I have, but I'm not going to read all of that. Uh, anyway, um, so in Hosea, it talks about a door of hope and expectation. And there's a place of hope and expectation. Oh, and I will give her her vineyards from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came out of the land of Egypt. So there's a door of hope that God brings us to. And the door to the temple is all of these, right? It's a, it's a door to a city. It's a door to our mouth. We speak, right? It's a door that we open and we close. And it's a door of hope and expectation. And then the house of God, right? In uh, the door and then the house, right? The door is what we pass through. The house. Um, in this case, the house of God and how far you're going is measured in cubits. And there are three houses that God told man to build um, for, well, God, God instructed man to build three different houses, right? He told Noah to build the ark in Genesis 3, I'm sorry, Genesis 6, verses 13 through 15. Hang with me, it gets better. <laughs> um, Genesis six thirteen through 15. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. The earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it, 30 cubits. So we made an ark. And Peter, if you want to show those pictures in the PowerPoint. So there's this ark, right? Uh, 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits tall, right? And then if you want to go to the next picture, they've actually built, they've actually reconstructed, um, can I go to the next picture? Okay. Um, they've actually reconstructed the arcs in different places. I think this one's in Kentucky. There's one in the Netherlands. I mean, they've reconstructed it so we can see that's a big house. <laughs> that's a big arc, right? I just thought it was kind of neat to see that. But God was very specific about how many cubits long it should be, 300, right? And then the next house that God instructed us to build was in Exodus. And if you want to go to the next picture, this was the tabernacle that Moses was commanded to build. And this was 100 cubits long, and it was 50 cubits wide and 5 cubits tall. And inside of this tabernacle were three specific places. The outer courts, which were 70 cubits long, 50 cubits wide. The holy place, which is um, where the table of showbread and the altar of incense and the lamp, the candlesticks were, 20 cubits long and 10 cubits wide. And then the holiest of holies was the smallest at 10 cubits long and just a 10 by 10. And then lastly, God commanded Solomon to rebuild his temple in Jerusalem. And in this, the temple was 60 cubits long, 20 cubits wide, and 30 cubits tall. So it's important to note that each time God told man to build a place, it got smaller, and it got smaller, 
and pretty and now it's gone away because now God has chosen the temple not built with human hands. The temple was becoming more and more irrelevant because this temple was a place of judgment. This temple was a place in the ark that was the, where he kept um, what was left as he judged the whole world. And next, it's the place they went to the mercy seat once a year. And next, it was the permanent place that all of them entered into, you know, the permanent place that didn't have to travel in the desert. And each time it was smaller and smaller. Now we are the temple. And going back to Ezekiel now, the other important thing that sticks out to me is the door of the temple opens to the east. How I many of you know Jesus is the eastern gate, right? And that's why our house of prayer in this house, as we said on the east side, is the eastern gate. We believe we have been called to the eastern gate. Ezekiel 43, verses 1 through 5. Ezekiel talks a lot about this eastern gate and other scriptures. Ezekiel 43, verses 1 through 5. Afterward, he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the Lord, the glory of God of Israel, came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters. And the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Shabar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. The Lord enters through the eastern gate. Ezekiel 44, 1 through 3. It's through that eastern gate he comes and he fills the house with his glory. Ezekiel 44, 1 through 3. Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut. It shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it, because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate, and shall go out by the same way thereof, the same, go out the same way. I don't even know our prince has come, and he opened that gate. And what he opens, no man can shut. And how many of you know we are called to be kings and priests and heirs and joint heirs with Jesus Christ? Romans 8, 14 through 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. We are joint heirs with Christ. Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. And because we are heirs, we have been called to be kings and priests in this earth, in this world. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And lastly, Matthew 18, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 18, 18 through 20. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever ye loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst. That's a powerful promise, church. 
We are the eastern gate into that temple. We are the temple and we are the gate. And then there's the river. We talk a lot about the river here in, in worship and in other times we talk a lot about this river. And we know that God's throne is its source. Revelation 22 verses 1 through 2. Revelation 22, 1 and 2. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruit, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. And like I mentioned, uh, Psalm 46, 4 this is right, um, this is the, the song we just sang is right from Psalm 46, 4. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. We are the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. We are those streams that make glad the city of our God. Um, Zechariah 14.8 Zechariah 14.8 And it shall be in that day that living waters shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. We're all called to different paths, right? But the, the, it's flowing from the city. So what I want to talk about today, all of that was kind of a precursor. I'm going to talk about going in and coming out, right? Because we go in and we come out. You know, um, the tabernacle is an example. The tabernacle, when you go in, you go through the outer courts, right? And then you go to the holy place and the holy of holies. And all of that reveals something to us. Going in, it's all about us, right? It's all about preparing us to go further, to go deeper, right? Preparing us to go into this temple, into his presence, and into him himself until we become one. The outer courts represent the body, the flesh of man, revealing that Jesus is the way, just like Tim said. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And the outer court reveals that Jesus is the way. His sacrifice on the brazen altar, the blood that is required to enter into the holy place, and the brazen lava, which washes us clean with the water of the word. And the holy place represents the soul of man, revealing that Jesus Christ is the truth. The golden lampstand, the table of showbread, the golden altar of incense, they represent a place of prayer, of sustenance, of anointing, right? And then there's the holy of holies, which represents the spiritual heart of man, which is revealing Jesus as the life. It's where the mercy seat is. It's the place of judgment. It's the place of eternal life. It's the place of holiness. It's the place of his glory. And it was the judgment throne of God, the place of appeasement. And the high priest was required to be covered with first blood and then oil before entering that holy of holies. He only had access once a year. And he had to prepare just to enter for one moment to sprinkle the blood on the, the mercy seat. The same Greek word that is translated uh, appeasement is translated prop propitiation in Romans. It talks about Jesus as our mercy seat. And the, the Greek word for propitiation also means appeases. And that means that Jesus is both the place of appeasement and that which appeases. Or said another way, Jesus is both the mercy seat and the sacrifice and the sacrificial spotless lamb. Jesus, fully God and fully man, did both. But going out, it's no longer about us because something happens when we go to that place, right? When we go to that mercy seat, when we go into that holy of holies that we're called to boldly go, something happens there. It's no longer about us. It's about him. And that's the price that we pay to unseat ourselves from the throne of our lives and to enthrone Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and King of our hearts and our lives. Our lives are no longer ours that we live. It's no longer our way, just like, he, just like Tim was singing that song, Thine will be done. It's all about Him. Once we enter into that Holy of Holies, we are responsible for pouring out 
all that we have been given. We are responsible for sharing the good news. We are responsible for inviting others to enter in so that they may also go out. Galatians 2, verses 14 through 21. This is kind of a long passage, but this is so important to understand how on earth do we die and live? We're called to hang up ourselves and take on Jesus Christ. But how do we walk around with alive? We're alive, but yet we're dead. And that's that mystery, and that's the struggle. Um, yeah, 2.14, okay. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the... So this is, um, this is Paul having an issue. He, he's he's, um, he's going he's gonna to give Peter a, a little uh, piece of his mind because Peter is talking about circumcision. He's making the Gentiles be circumcised. He's, he's having this discussion about what's going on here, Peter. He's kind of calling him out a little bit. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before all of them, If thou, being a Jew, livest up after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature, and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. So what's Paul saying? It's not about you. You can't earn it. You can't. Why, why are you taking bits and pieces of the law and taking these believers who have become new creations and putting them back under the law? You're mixing it. And once you mix it, grace becomes null and void. And then it becomes all about you. And then you've got to enter back in again. You can't come out. You can't come out unless you're a new creation. You can't come out and do the work that we have been sent to do unless it is Jesus living in you. Otherwise, you're going back to that foundations and you're undoing it all. And you're trying to make it about you, not about Jesus. Ordinary men and women would die if they went into that Holy of Holies. Even, even the high priest, they had to listen for the bell, right? They had to listen and make sure there's you know, been stories that they put a rope around their ankle in case they were cast down. And that was the high priest who was prepared to go in there. Ordinary men and women would die if they entered that Holy of Holies. But Jesus tore the veil. He, allowed, he shed his blood on the mercy seat, becoming the mercy seat, allowing us to have access to the Holy of Holies. Hebrews, 8, uh, Hebrews 10, verses 8 through 22. That's another big passage. Let me see if I can cut it down a little bit. Hebrews 8, Hebrews 10, 8 through... Um, so Jesus is talking about, or I'm sorry, Paul is talking about um, the burnt offerings, right? This is, he's saying, you know, the burnt offerings and all the stuff that we used to go in. They have to do it every year. It was never permanent. Uh, above, when he said, sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin, thou wouldest not. Neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will oh my, can't read thing. By the which we will will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstools. For by one authoring he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. 
for after that he had said before. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. By a new and a living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, his flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So that talks about that outer court, right? Because we are sprinkled with the blood of Jesus and we are washed through the water of the word. By entering in, you become the temple. 1 Corinthians 3.16 1 Corinthians 3.16 Know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? John 1.12 But as many as received him, to them gave he power to be the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Acts 1.8 The minute we believe, he gives us power, and we, we get that spirit of adoption, and we call him Father. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And then the Holy Ghost comes and he endues us with power. We shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. And as you're going out, as you release the kingdom, as you release it, the kingdom gets bigger and bigger. Matthew 16:19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And as we loose that kingdom, it gets bigger and it gets bigger. Um, so I'm going to just paraphrase a few things. I've got a lot of scripture here. So Jesus tells us that there's, we, there's a heavenly Jerusalem and we have been registered as citizens in heaven. We receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Ephesians tells us that um, we have been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly realms in Christ. And that we have received an inheritance, a destiny, where we claimed by God as his own. We have been chosen, predestined, appointed before, according to the purpose of him who works everything in agreement. We were stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. And again, in Zechariah, it reminds us that it is not by power, not by, it's not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. And that when we see the mountain, O great mountain, O Zerubbabel, we are to speak grace, grace to it. Um, let's see, I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Okay. Um, so... Going into the temple, it's all about us, right? We pass through, we receive salvation for our, our mortal bodies, our eternal bodies. We go to the holy place, we start to renew our minds, our soul, we start to renew our minds, and then we enter that holy of holies and we are given a new spirit, the eternal life. We become one with God. But then what, right? Then what? Well, then we're supposed to turn around and go back out. And that's where I believe that thousand cubits when we leave the church. That thousand cubits and that thousand cubits. And I believe it takes faith to step out that first thousand cubits, right? It takes faith. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We're humans. We like to see. <laughs> when we step out into the water, it's just ankle deep. right? That first thousand cubits 
takes the faith of a grain of mustard seed, right? And we can move mountains. But it's that ankle deep water. We, we can't see the bottom, right? You got to step out. And he gives us his faith, right? And then step two takes faith and then it takes hope, right? To hope in him. We have to trust him and we have to put our hope in him. And hope is also, in my mind, a peace of mind. Deuteronomy 31.6. How often can we hold our peace? It's so hard in this world to hold our peace when so many things go around us. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that, do, that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This is when the spies, right? The spies went in and they saw the giants. They saw the giants with their eyes, but they also saw with their spiritual eyes. They saw the fruit, they saw the houses, they saw the vineyards. They knew, they saw the promise. And they choose, they chose in that moment to put their hope in, in God, to put their confidence in God and to hold their peace. Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26.3. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Our minds wander, worries come, those thoughts come. But if we will stop and we will stay our mind on him, to, for me sometimes I just have to say the name of Jesus out loud just to erase it, to stop it, because you don't even realize you're doing it and you're just chewing on this worry. You're chewing on that thought that comes. You've got to just stop it. And you've got to stay your mind on Jesus. And he gives us his perfect peace. John 14, 27. He gives us his perfect peace. John 14, 27. Because remember that second step, that second, that, that, that second thousand cubits, it's up to your knees now. You've you got you to gotta have some balance. And you're looking ahead and you see that it's growing, right? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. How many times during the day do we find ourselves with our hearts troubled? And if our hearts are troubled, we cannot take that next step. We cannot. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the, rate that, the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradictions of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds telling you when it gets to the ankles it starts to get good and then the wind starts to blow and i'm telling you there is something about that second cubit that requires hope to persevere and to press on because that's where the resistance starts to really come and that's where we have got jesus endured the cross because of the hope that was set before him because he knew what was on the other side church we know what is on the other side and if we can remember and stay our minds on that it gives us the hope that is required to press forward. Isaiah 40, 31. This is my favorite verse about when those winds of trial come, we just mount up on them, right? Isaiah 40, 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles, and they shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Church, when the winds blow, we have got to just soar. We've got to just let it go and stretch our arms. And he is those wings, right? He is the one that has the wings. Isaiah 43, 2. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. When you get to start walking, when it comes to your knees and to your hips, you have to remember, that when you're passing through the waters, he is with us, right? Through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. In order to get to that next thousand cubits, it's going to be to our thighs, and then it's going to be over our heads. And if we aren't secure, 
we could be swept away. Joshua 1.9, same thing I started with. Now Joshua, we've passed over, um, they're getting ready to pass over the River Jordan. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, where, 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 whithersoever thou goest. God is with us. So what's it take for that next step? It takes faith, it takes hope, and then it takes grace, right? It takes grace because once we get up there, we are trusting in the Lord. Once we are just floating, we are swimming, we are whatever you want to call it, you are out there, you have got to be able to trust in the Lord. Um, Let's go to, I forgot my little note. Um, Well, so so Peter, right? Jesus is... um, he stayed to pray. It was after the fish and those loaves, and they fed the 5,000. He went up to the mountain to pray. And um, he said, you guys go. The apostles, you go in the ship. I'll catch up with you. You guys go. They were crossing. They were out in the sea. And it was 4 in the morning. And Jesus is walking on the water to him to come get on the boat. Because why wouldn't Jesus walk on the water? Didn't occur to him he couldn't, right? And Peter's like, it's a ghost. And the, the, all the, the apostles are like, it's a ghost. And um, Jesus said, have no fear, it's I, it's me. You know me, it's me. And Peter said, well, if it's really you, Lord, call me out of the boat. And he says, all right, get out of the boat. Peter says, okay. Gets out of the boat. He's like, I'm walking on water. And he's like, and there's a storm. And he took his eyes off Jesus and he started to sink. And he said, Lord, help me. Right? It takes grace to walk on the water. Because I believe that God is calling us to a place where not only are we floating, we're walking on the water. And if we will hold our peace, right? If we will keep that mustard seed of faith, we'll hold our peace. I feel like, I was thinking, I feel like I need a Holy Ghost buzzer. Like, you know that game Operation where zzz, or like those shot collars you put on a dog? Zzz. I need like a Holy Ghost buzzer where the, oh, flesh, ee, you know, oh, doubt, ee, you know, like, Every time, because you know how it just comes, and you don't realize you're in it until you're like, oh man, I just, you know, wasted all my energy, didn't get a good night's sleep because I was chewing on that, I had a bad dream, I don't know how many people get bad dreams, but I swear those are attacks from the enemy, bad dreams come, those thoughts that come, pretty soon you've wasted an hour, and how much energy, for things that are never going to happen, things that are never going to be there, you need that Holy Ghost buzzer, or when, or when you're in traffic and you're just starting to get really upset, Holy Ghost buzzer. You know, when you're dealing uh, with, a, with a spouse situation, because I know you guys don't ever fight, but our, Michael and I sometimes disagree, have lively debates, need a Holy Ghost buzzer. This is my partner who loves me and knows me and is for me, not against me, right? Need that Holy Ghost buzzer. Even our cars tell us when they're low on fuel, right? Our cars, to get that ding, 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 50 miles, warning, 50 miles to empty. Why don't we come with one of those? <laughs> ding, 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 run it low. Better go back into the temple. Better go uh, pray. Go better go rest in the Lord. Better go read some word. But get a little. You need to go renew your mind. Go read some word. But we don't, right? We just have the Holy Spirit. But we have to have the ears to hear when He's leading and guiding us. And um, <laughs> how do I want to end here today? So. I want us to remember, there were parables. I'm going to go through just a couple parables. Um, so there were the, in Matthew 25, there's two, ter- there's two parables. One is the parable of the ten virgins. <clears throat> there were five wise and five foolish, right? And the five foolish brought just their lamp. And they thought, oh, I'll get oil later when he comes. And the wise brought oil with them, right? When we we're in the river, we don't have to bring our oil. He is the oil. When we are connected... We're always wise, right? We're connected to that wisdom. And the parable of the talents. I've always wondered what this, there's so many parables that talk about somebody gets an exponential growth, right? You know, the hundredfold versus the sixtyfold, the sower, the talents, you know, the the five talents that went and invested and and grew at five, the two talents which went and invested and then grew at two more. And then the one talent is the person that was given a talent and just hid it because they were afraid. And the Lord said, take away his talent and give it to the person who made five out of his five. That seems kind of harsh. But how many times do we come in and we just stay? Right? 
We go into the temple. We go into the Holy of Holies. We receive the Spirit. And then we come back out and we're like, ooh, I like the showbread. I like to worship. I like the altar of incense. I really like to pray. And I'm just going to camp here and I never leave the temple. I never leave through the gate. And I never share it with anybody. Right? We're called to more. Let's see. Um, and then the parable of the sower. But the other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. You know? It doesn't matter. Just get out there, right? Get out there, and God will give the increase. And that river, right? John 7 38, there's that river that flows from us. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. We are the living water that people are thirsty for. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to read Revelations 20. I'm going to read 1 through 7. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified, though. It's a little different. But Revelations 20, verses 1 through 7. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. They were banished. And there is no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, arrayed like a bride adorned for her husband. And then I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will live among them, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be death. There will no longer be sorrow and anguish or crying or pain. For the former order of things has passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also he said, Write, for these words are faithful and true. They are accurate, incorruptible, and trustworthy. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts, I will give water from the fountain of life, the, the, give the fountain of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes the world by adhering faithfully to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Uh, let's see. And uh, Revelation 20, I'm going to read um, just a few more passages from here out of the Amplified. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And having the glory of God, her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a great wall, Great had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and at the gates twelve angels and the names written thereon which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel on the east three gates and on the north three gates and on the south three gates and on the west three gates and the wall of the city had twelve foundations and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof and I saw no temple therein for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of sun, neither of moon to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it. And the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And the kings of earth do bring their glory and honor into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day. For there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So, we are the eastern gate that flows out from the temple. Are we opening that door and stepping out in faith, even when it looks scary? Even when we feel like we should be perfect before we invite others into the temple? And let's see. Or are we stuck in the temple enjoying ourselves, enjoying the work inside the temple? Studying the word, worshiping, teaching those in the temple? There's nothing wrong with any of that. But we're called to a higher purpose. Um, okay, so um, the last, the going, the going in. So when we're going in to the temple, right? When we're entering in, 
for kitties, right, Roberto? This is one of Roberto's favorites. When we're entering into the temple, it's all about us. And we are, we're, does this look like a fierce warrior to you? Is this anything scary? Yeah, they, they might scratch you a little bit. There's nothing there to be scared of. There's nothing there. But boy, when we're going in, when we're coming out, God makes us a new creation. And as new creations, we are powerful. We have the power of heaven. We have the power of God Almighty abiding in us, right? To break the chains. We sang that song today. To set the captives free. To lay hands on the sick. To raise the dead. And to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So Revelation 22, 1 through 5. I'll just read this. And if you want to go to the next slide, Peter. And just go ahead and put that next slide up there. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just read it. Um, so... We've been talking about a logo. So this is just something that I made. It doesn't have to be our logo forever, but I showed it to Nathan. And I was thinking of Revelation 22 when I made that. Revelation 22 says, And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. We are the streams that flow out. We are the trees with the, the branches as healing when we lay in our hands. The healing of the nations, right? And so all we need to do is let the river flow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're dismissed. Thank you. Thanks for sticking it out with me. You like that? Yeah, we need it on the sign now. Yeah, well. Yeah, we need a new sign. I know I was just going to say that. One project at a time.